God Games episode 26 and in this episode I'll show you all the games that I bought since last time. Alright so let's go straight into it. So the first game that I got is uh, for the Nintendo GameCube. It's Virtua Striker 2002. This is uh, one of my favorite GameCube games. The reason it took me so long to get it was because I either found the game only the loose disc, incomplete, or kind of messed up. So it took me some time, but if you watch my collection videos or my pickup videos, you might have noticed that I, I only pick about like a handful of GameCube games per year uh, for the simple reason that I don't play that much GameCube anymore. Um, so I just really want to add my all-time favorites and this is one of them we're just record 2002 and i know a lot of people might prefer the dreamcast version a bit more because it has a bit more of arcadey flair uh, but i always like the gamecube version more not only not only because it looks significantly better but it also plays way smoother and the camera angle is not that close like in the dreamcast version which can lead to a lot of frustrating moments later when the game becomes hotter and um, so yeah, but the game is also very arcadey. It's in a very arcade football game. I love football games, so that's why I picked it up. Um, after 2002, uh, there was Virtua Striker 2003, but it was an arcade exclusive game. It never came out to the consoles. It was just arcade exclusive. There is though on the internet a beta build of 2003, so you can download and play through emulation. But yeah, that was the last game from the Virtua Sveca series. There is still glimpses of the core engine in that Tokyo 2020 game for the PS4, uh, which I only bought because of that reason, but it's not good. It's just, uh, you're playing as a bunch of avatars and um, yeah, it's not good, but Virtua Sveca 2002 with the GameCube is good. So that's the reason I picked it up. Let's stay with the Nintendo stuff for now. And let me show you what I got for the Nintendo Switch. The next game is Shane Chan, me and the professor on summer vacation. I really wanted to have this game physically because I love Shin Chan. I'm still watching Shin Chan. And a lot of people don't know that, but Shin Chan has over 900 episodes and it's still airing in Japan. And uh, I found him hilarious. I really wanted to have the game physically. And I bought the South Korean version of this game because I found it for a really good price. And I also believe that it might have the English translation. But I was wrong, and this is more of a learning money now for me because uh, the game is fully in Korean only, and uh, yeah, what a shame. So I have no idea what they're talking about, but the game looks beautiful. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really hard to get the game physically with English translation for the Switch. There is uh, a limited run release for PS4 and Switch, and I think Switch got like a collector's edition or something. So the price is very high um, on eBay and so, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna able, if I'm gonna be able to get the game. Uh, but yeah, I don't know anyone from South Korea or who collects Korean games. The only one is Retro Mooparang. Shout out to him. He's a YouTuber and does a lot of Neo Geo stuff. So someday, tell me what should I do with this game? Nah, I'm just kidding. So yeah, bummer, but. So the next game is Salt and Sanctuary. Uh, this is an, another case that I had with uh, Blasphemous. Um, I bought it digitally and I really want to have it physically, preferably on PS4, but I found the Nintendo Switch version for a really good price and I decided to grab it. This is a Metroidvania game with Souls-like elements and I know this is something you might hear now all the time because every single Metroidvania game that comes out is technically a Metroidvania game with RPGs or Souls-like elements, but this one is definitely worth calling it out as a you know Souls-like Metroidvania game uh, because I found here so many cool details uh, resemblance the Dark Souls trilogy. For example, the parry feedback and the sounds is just really like a Souls-like game. You have the fat roll and you collecting soul instead of souls so and the you know sweaty boss fights it's just perfect and i know the game might look like one of those papa louis pizza web browser games but um, it's just super fun and highly recommend it digitally the game is dirt cheap you can buy it um 
on Steam, it's most of the time on sale for 150 or so. On the PlayStation Network, it's about for three bucks or so. And I highly recommend the game. It's a super awesome game. Get it if you can. Physically, on the other side, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, depends if you're buying it used on eBay, it can go up to 70 bucks. If you want to buy it brand new, it can go up to 100 bucks. So that's why I decided to grab this one used. And uh, I paid uh, 50 bucks for it. Um, so yeah, sold in Sanctuary. Next is uh, a game collection, is the IGS Classic Arcade Collection. Uh, this includes a bunch of our retro arcade belt action games, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, but I must say I might have bought this game for one game only, and that is Martial Masters. This is an awesome game, I love it. I have played this game a lot in, in Fightcade, but uh, I don't know, I just got weak when I saw this. Holding it in my hand, I was like, all right, let me grab it. So, Martial Masters is an awesome fighting game. I uh, love it. Um, so yeah, IGS Classic Arcade Collection for the Switch. All right, so that was my Nintendo stuff. Now let me show you what I got for PlayStation. I'm gonna start with PS1, and I got Crash Team Racing. Can play with manual and a uh, little flyer over there. And this game, I exchanged it actually with my uh, SmackDown 2 copy that I had, uh, the Greatest Hits version, because uh, I got it later as Black Label, and I found someone who was um, trying to get SmackDown games for for the PlayStation 1 and 2, and uh, he had a big interest into my SmackDown 2, so we exchanged, I got this game here, and I gave him SmackDown 2. Now, Crash Team Racing, I got this game recommended, and I know the game is good, but I'm a big believer that those kart racing games, whenever it's Mario Kart 64, TD Kong Racing, or Crash Team Racing, they are really fun when you play them with friends. When you play them alone, for me personally, they're just getting bored quickly, you know, it's not the same. So I play a few, uh, you know, I drive a few laps and I play a few levels, but all my memories that I had back then, all the positive memories, it's just either I play with my brother, my friends. Uh, so I, like, like I said, uh, the games are goaded, you know, but alone, it's just not the same. And the same feeling I have with this one, so I never added to the collection. I mean, I'm doing it now, but uh, yeah, that, that was the reason why I've never added those Oh, I'm not, I'm not really hunting those uh, card racing games, even though they're goaded. So yeah, but still, I will, I will definitely play it somewhat, but um, yeah. It just looks really good in the collection, I can't lie. <sighs> this Genji, Dawn of the Samurai. This is the game that I'm currently playing. I'm having about, like, I believe it's almost three hours or so, and this game looks absolutely stunning for a PS2 game. Um, I'm recording the footage that you see right now in front of my TV just to really show you how good the game looks. And uh, it's a hack and slash game, samurai game. And so far I really had a good impression of it. Um, so yeah, if you like hack and slash games, samurai games, check it out. Uh, really awesome game. I have never played this. I know that it, it has a somewhat of a good reputation, but you know, uh, I wanted to check out myself. And yeah, I got it. So yeah, uh, FIFA 2005. I said it a bunch of times. I want to have a full FIFA set for the PS2. And uh, with this one, I got one more in the books, I guess. Four. Uh, then I got two games. They are nothing special, but I have a little history with them. And uh, so yeah, let me, let's talk about it. So the first game is Luminous Plus. And I'm I'm adding this to the collection. Does anybody still remember the early stage of the, you know, modification on PSP custom firmware? Um, I remember it very well. It was somewhere around 2007. I was I had no eBay account. I was not collecting games. I mean, obviously, I wanted to hack my PSP. And uh, but in order to downgrade your Sony firmware, so you could install the custom firmware. During a specific time, you needed Lumines for the PSP. And I remember that I was on vacation, I was visiting my family, and I was I was hunting the game so bad, I was walking around into every single second-hand store, video game store, and I couldn't find it, it was sold everywhere. And I was like, man, as soon as I hack my PSP, the first game I'm gonna play is Lumines. 
but I never did. It was out of sight, out of mind, because I think like a few weeks later they released another version which allows you to just downgrade your PSP so you can install the constant firmware. And uh, I found the game uh, on eBay for I believe it was 350 or so. And I mean, obviously it should have been the PSP game, but I was like, wait a minute, we both have we both have some old business now, right now, and I grabbed it. So. Yeah, it's a decent puzzle game where you have to, you know, you know, build up some bricks and destroy them to, to build up your score. It's nothing special. I would not really recommend the game. But like I said, I had a personal story with this game, so I, I picked it up. So, yeah. Commando Strike Force. This is a game that I boycotted when I was a kid because I love Commandos back then. I love the top-down strategy games. 1, 2, and 3. I played them on PC back then, and I love them. And um, now, during a time, the World War II shooters, like Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, Battlefield, they were doing so good. So I believe that Eidos decided, let's jump onto the hype train and let's, and let's use our beloved Commandos uh, franchise and make a, f a first person World War II shooters because apparently they're doing so good, right? Well, the game was not received very well, neither from the critics nor the fans, especially not from the fans. And that was the end for the Commandos franchise. Till early this year, they released Commandos Origins trailer, and uh, they they said that they're gonna go back to the roots with as a top-down strategy game. They released last month gameplay footage, and the game looks good. So, you know, I can leave the past behind now and check out actually the game if it's if it's really as bad. Uh, because I have never seen gameplay footage, I've never played myself. I checked it out, and uh, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just like a bland first-person shooter game, nothing special. I like, I would not really recommend it, but you know, I saw it, and uh, I, you know, I want to give it a try because I got hired with Commandos and God, I'm looking forward to the top-down, you know, uh, strategy game, Commandos Origins. Can't wait to play that one. So yeah, so, so yeah, Commander Strike Force for the PS2. Um, I got nothing for PS3 and PS4, but I have some some cool games for the PS5 and some other stuff that I'm gonna show you now. So first, I'm gonna show you my SSD that I just got. I just got really tired of every single time when I'm buying a new game, I had to delete some some games or sometimes two games because you know there are over 100 gigabyte most of the time now. And uh, I cannot, you know, from jump from one game into a into another just like that, or just play a few rounds Tekken, Street Fighter, because I never had enough space, you know. And uh, that I reached a point where it was so annoying that I said, you know what, let me just grab an SSD, and I'm good. And uh, I got myself a two terabyte one. I actually wanted just to get one terabyte, but the price of weird like 120 cost one terabyte and 159 cost a two so it was like yeah let me get the two terabyte uh, and i'm good with that so yeah now you might think about that i should have probably keep the money and save it so when the ps5 pro releases i could just you know buy it but i'm not gonna get a ps5 pro because there is no point i i don't see a reason why you should get that and i um i mean the only positive thing that I see that is Assassin's Creed uh, Shadow is gonna run in 60 FPS. That's the only thing. But I'm not spending 700 or 800 bucks for that console. And then I don't even have a disc drive. You have to buy that extra. So I don't know. Sony has become a scalper of its own, I think. And so yeah, I'm not buying a PS5 Pro. Um, so yeah, but I got this one instead. So then I got myself uh, a new controller, which is the Astrobot controller. Um, That's how it looks with the white analog sticks. And on the back, it has like the little Astrobot logo. Um, if I hate something about the PlayStation 5, it's definitely the durability of the controllers. All the limited edition controllers that I bought so far the, from Spider Man 2, God of War, Ragnarok. I have another two white controllers that I bought when, you know, the PS5 came out on release. I have another purple one. All of those controllers have stick drift. The only controller that's still alive is the current the controller that I'm using right now and that has a military camouflage. Um, actually, wait, let me show you. 
Yeah, this is the controller that I'm using at the moment for the PS5. I bought it because um, uh, because of, I actually wanted to use this for Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta <laughs> because the camouflage. But I have to use it now because every single controller that I have has stick drift and I'm using currently this one. So I don't know, only God knows how long this will hold up. Every single like three, four months I have to buy a new one. And I don't even play sweaty or so, I don't play Call of Duty. I mean, I do play a lot and I play a long sessions, but I don't, I'm not playing Call of Duty or anything where you're going wild with the analog stick. So there's just like, it's really something that I had about the PS5. On PS4, PS3, PS2, all the controllers that I have, the PS2, even the, my, my controllers that I had during my childhood, they're all still working. But PS5, man, I hate those controllers. All right, now let me show you the games that I have for the PS5. I'm gonna start with a very popular one, Concord. <laughs> now this is actually, I have a very funny story about this game because I bought it together with my SSD. I went home with it. Uh, I bought this game based on a recommendation from a guy that I was playing Helldivers 2 with. And uh, I bought the game, the SSD, and went home, and then I needed to go on, I mean, not needed, but I went on vacation. And I was there for two weeks. And uh, when I came back, I heard the news that Sony is, you know, taking the plug off the servers. And I was like, oh my, already? So I'm surprised, man. Sony is giving up after two weeks. They're not even transform this game into a free to play game or anything. That's so radical, like I'm surprised. So when I came back, I had in total three hours <laughs> to test the game. And uh, I played for about an hour or so. And uh, I must say it's definitely for my first impressions because obviously I can't really say much after playing one hour, but for my first impression, it's definitely not the worst game I ever played. There are definitely far worse ones, um, but it's just like a, like a first person V versus five game that, you know, nothing special in my opinion, but I'm not sure. Like uh, it's just these days, man, like YouTubers are, complaining and whining non-stop uh, that's number one and it generates like a hate train and also I must say that I believe the developers that didn't react very well to that critics and, and stuff so I think that's kind of like the reason why the game failed so hard but it just really surprised me that Sony was so strict and say all right we're taking it off the market um, there is also currently right now this crazy price speculation with the game that you know it's gonna be like a uh, a holy grail later or so uh, similar like Godzilla but I must say you can say what you want about Godzilla but at least you can play it offline you can put it in your disc and play it this game you cannot do anything with it because no offline mode so you can only put the disc and try to play it and that's it so it's kind of weird and also it does not have any popularity it has no community nobody likes this game so I highly doubt this game is going to be high in price. I mean, on eBay, people are trying to sell it, but at the moment, you can still go to um, retail stores and find it. Last time I was there, uh, there were still a few copies left, so I don't think it's that hard to get. So before you go on eBay and bargain with people, buying this game for 80 bucks or so, you know, check out your retail store. It might be still lying around. Uh, Concord for the PS5. Yeah, yeah. Oops. The next game is Saga Emerald Beyond for the PS5. I really forced myself to like this game because it has only positive reviews. I have never heard or seen anyone talking bad about this game, but I, I just don't understand because the game, in my opinion, is, is not good. Um, so you play in you play one of in total five sagas, and I picked the first saga that I played was uh, the Vampire Lord one. I don't know why, I think it just gave me Jojo vibes or so. So I picked him and the game starts with like a comic type of dialogues and it's Grinch. Uh, it to a point where it's just painful Grinch and not dumb fun Grinch. And uh, then the game puts you in this map, just does really the bare minimum here. So you walk around in that map, super linear. It, the game gives you like uh, a few events. It's either story or a combat event that you can, you know, just participate as many times as you want. No, no exploration, nothing. It's just really bad. Now, the only, the highlight of this game, which in my opinion is still only decent, 
um, is the combat system. So the game itself gives you actually like cool, cool options. Like you can set up a formation, you can set up of different roles. When you when the when they start when you start the the combat, you can chain up your party members into a chain combo. So they will attack uh, next to each other and doing more damage because like there's a combo meter and it builds up the damage scale. You can also inter intercept interrupt attacks, and um, and that the enemies can do that too. By the way, so it might look like you're about to lose but if you have placed the the party members uh, correctly you can even turn tides and win the end so the story turns out to be an absolute grinch fest so i stopped playing this game i was disappointed and then i gave it a second chance and i started um with the with the story with the second story part which are those two police officers and uh it's actually the story is still grinch but it's so dumb in a fun way so let me explain so you play as those two, uh, as those two police officers that are chasing a suspect and the suspect goes into a, a different world and you have to follow him through that and uh he gets eaten up by a monster and you are teaming up with cats yeah your your party members are cats in the <laughs> in this one and you are fighting him so it and and the, and the cats are still your party members and it's just super hilarious it's so dumb but in a funny way so this this one kept me motivating to keep playing a little bit but uh, i reached now a point where i'm very close to the end and the fights they are either you now the difficulty of the fights they, they will display they will show you and it's either medium easy or hard now when you are participating in a hard combat event it's always it feels really like you're either overwhelming your opponent or you're getting overwhelmed so when the combat starts and your party member attacks first you can chain up a combo and doing a lot of damage or if the combat starts and your enemy attacks first they will be like you know the, they will chaining up into a combo and you are you're losing one or two party members already so and yes i upgraded my my weapons and stuff but it doesn't really help much so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep going with the game. Uh, I was really disappointed because I actually was looking forward to. There is a demo of this game, so if you wanna check it for yourself, give it a try. I was not really happy with this. Sega Mirror or Beyond. Next game is Fate Seeker 2. This is a uh, Chinese Diablo-ish top-down uh hack and slash game with rpg elements i think that's the best way to describe it so you play as this asian um martial arts hero and you have to do some quests um some cool little detail about this game is when you're talking to npcs uh they will sometimes start lying so you have to show them proof that you know and um that they're lying and uh it just turns out to be this little phoenix ride mini game it's it's actually pretty cool i have played for about an hour i must say the combat system is decent um you have different combo types menus are just overwhelmingly bad They're like i have no idea what's going on with the menus it's just like uh, very chaotic the graphics looks like almost like a ps2 game so yeah I'm, i mean this must be some game for die hardcore rpg fans or some diablo fans that you know are looking for a game but it's not bad. It just looks really horrible graphic-wise. But so far, I must say, it's it's not that bad. This game is Indica. I have played and finished this already. It's just very short. It's just like three and a half hours. It's also more of an interactive movie, but not really interactive because I have a few puzzles and riddles that you have to do, but it's just mostly only walking around and talking the whole time. It's just more like a movie, to be honest. Now, the game is about Indika, a young nun in Russia, and um, she's getting uh, treated very bad in the monastery. And one day she has to do like a delivery mission, she deliver a letter, and she finds a convict. And uh, because the convict helps her, she wants to do good and help him as well. So she flees with him and she is consistently battling with her inner voice and her urges and there's a lot of dialogues and they're very interesting however what i wish this game would have done is giving you eventually some dialogue options you know because this is all you do in this game you're walking around you solve some puzzles and riddles and 
they are talking all the time, but you cannot participate or having like somewhat of an interactive experience because it's very linear, they're just talking, and after three and a half hours, you see the credits already. But it's still very interesting. The story is actually pretty good. Um, however, I would probably only recommend it if it gets a bit cheaper. Even though the game on day one costed me 30 bucks, I think it's a little bit too much for three and a half hours. Uh, the game should have been maximum 20, I believe. So, but it's still nice. So if you can find this on sale somewhere on a shovel area, so grab it. The game was, was fun. Uh, the next game is Withering Rooms. I have not played it so far, I couldn't. Uh, but I have opened it up because uh, I've noticed how heavy the game is and it's because it has like a little deluxe edition or limited edition book or something with the characters. Now Withering Rooms is a 2.5 uh, platformer horror game. Uh, like I said, I really can't say much about it. I just uh, grabbed it and uh, I'm gonna play it the next days. The next game is Yars Rising. This is a game that I want to have for the Nintendo Switch, but it was sold out, so I got it for the PS5 instead. And I must say, I don't really regret it because haptic feedback on the controller is very nice, so uh, I'm glad that I got it at the end for the PS5. So in this game, you play as Emmy, who is working for the uh, Q-Tech Corporation, but she is there because she is like a spy and she wants to and I'll find out about the secrets what's going on behind the scenes in that corporation and uh, while she hacks terminals eventually she gets some powers which she needs because you know she's getting attacked by robots and all that stuff and uh, it's a really nice game I really tried it out and I fell in love with it the soundtrack is amazing and uh, you're getting more and more powers the more you progress in the game and uh, yeah, check it out. It's like I said, I just finished this game and I really liked it. So Yars Rising for the PS5. All right, and that's it already. Uh, now before finishing the video, I wanna say here something because I was thinking about eventually doing another video series. Nothing special, it's just what people usually do with those retro video game collecting channels. It's just games that I'm finished or games that I'm playing because I have beaten other games that uh, I haven't shown you. I have just finished the Wolfenstein games, both games, and a bunch of other games. So if you want to see that type of video too in in this channel, let me know in the comment section. I would really appreciate that. Um, otherwise, I might see you in the next collection video. So uh, yeah, leave a like and uh, subscribe for more collection update videos. Thank you and bye.